I am having the weirdest craving this week. Really? What are you craving? Pickles and cheese? No, I'm really craving corn dogs mm. and soup. Yeah, like a yummy, creamy chowder type of soup. Oh, well, Kristen, you are in luck because I had a feeling this was going to happen. And I picked today's recipe just for this specific situation. What? You did? I did. So you may be very pleasantly surprised. Let's find out. Welcome to Mom's Wooden Spoon. Get your apron on and your fanny flicker ready as we cook up some nostalgia. Ooh, yummy. Hello, everybody. This is Carrie. And this is Kristen. And welcome. Today, we are going to cook corn dog chowder. Ooh, yum, yum. And what makes this super exciting yes. is we're going to cook it in the, in the microwave. microwave. <laughs> <laughs> in the micro. My grandmother. My grandmother, too. Only my grandmother. <laughs> Okay, so our grandmother, yes. a huge fan of, of the, the micro, micro. <laughs> she never called it a microwave. Nope. It was always the, the micro. micro. Yeah. She was totally cool. Hip and cool like uh, that. So hip and cool. Yeah. So the corn dog chowder hails to us mm -hmm. from a Mary's memo, August 15th, 1983. Ooh. And it has, you know, not surprising hot dogs in it. <laughs> Doesn't or, everybody want hot dog soup? I mean, really? <laughs> what is that soup that you'd make as a kid? Was it like rock soup? Isn't there a book about oh, it? Oh, it's called Stone Soup. Stone Soup. Where everybody in the village brings something to add to the soup. Yes. Yes. You start with rocks, but you kind of get everybody involved and like, oh, I have a little onion. Oh, I have a potato. And you make a big dish together. I don't think anybody ever came and went, oh, I have hot dogs. <laughs> You don't know. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> we have hot dogs, or we more do. specifically, wieners. <laughs> yes. And then you have some uh, spices, salt, pepper, oregano, onion, and of course, potatoes and corn, as it is a chow. Oh, and bacon. Right. Well, you know, I wonder if our mom made this for us because the Mary's Memo is underlined. Well, because it's a microwave dish, it would automatically oh, yeah. be easy. When I mentioned to mom mm -hmm. that we were going to be making this, she said, oh, I remember those. It was back in the day when they kept putting out recipes for the microwave because they were trying to get people to do more cooking in it. Yes, rather than just reheating or thawing something, they yep. really, really worked hard to get people to cook full meals. I watched a 1980s ad on YouTube where the person said, you can cook a full meal in less than half an hour. And she pulls out this beef roast and potatoes and vegetables. I mean, the microwave was huge and it even had a shelf in it where you could put one thing to cook on the top wow. and others oh, I remember to the bottom. Those. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's right. So it worked. My husband mm -hmm. has done the cooking for years. It is absolutely one of his favorite things to do. Yeah. And when he was 10 or 11, even 12, he was cooking Thanksgiving dinner for the family. Really? Mm -hmm. He just loved it. And so when the microwave first came out and they got one, he was thinking, oh, this is going to be great. Yeah. I'm going to cook Thanksgiving in the microwave. Ooh. It's going to be equally as delicious yeah. and so much faster. <laughs> So he takes his turkey and he does all his prep. And of course, he doesn't have a cookbook oh, to tell right. him how to cook the turkey in the oh, microwave. Yeah. And he knows it's a lot faster than the oven. Yeah. So he's thinking, okay, so if a turkey takes like what, three hours mm -hmm. in the oven, an hour and a half in the microwave should absolutely do it. Mm -hmm. That's so fast. <laughs> so he puts his turkey in the microwave. He sets it for an hour and a half. He goes about his business, leaves the kitchen oh gosh comes back to black smoke oh. billowing out of the microwave oh, no. opens it up and his turkey has become this black oily oh. blob of nastiness oh, no and as you know one of his 
favorite foods. Oh yeah, is, is turkey. turkey. Mm-hmm. And they had no turkey that That's year. That's so sad. Yeah. Oh, what a hard lesson. That is a hard lesson. 12 or 13. Yep. You know, so. I remember our mom, she loved to cook chicken breasts in the microwave. Oh. And they would just be so rubbery, blubbery, and, and just white, pure white. Pure white. And the fat oh, yes. on the sides of the Oof. chicken turned yellow yes. and rock hard. It was so gross. And then she'd make it even better. Well, it's okay. We'll make them flavorful. We'll put salsa on the top. <laughs> I learned that I love Casey Masterpiece Barbecue Sauce. Oh, it would hide a variety of sins created in the micro. <laughs> yes, yes, it did. Well, you know, it's funny. The microwave came out in the 50s or yes. earlier, right? But it did not become available commercially or affordable commercially until the late 70s. And mm-hmm. even then it was expensive. I was actually looking up what the cost of a microwave would have been okay. in the late 70s, early 80s. And I actually found an article that said on the price is right. <gasps> they said that the actual retail price would have been $656. What? Yes. Do you know what $656 is in today's money? No. It is about $1,800. Holy crap. Microwaves were still expensive. I mean, that's ridiculous. Yeah. You could have gotten a nice Commodore 64 for a lot less. <laughs> yes, you could have. And played with your algorithms on it. <laughs> <laughs> or gotten dysentery on the Oregon That's Trail. That's what I was going with. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, speaking of Bob Barker and The Price is Right, I recently found that the Bob Barker era of The Price is Right is being replayed on Amazon's Free V channel. Oh I, my gosh. You're a, you're I'm addicted. TikTok yep. and yep. Old Price is Right. I watch it every day. It is so fun. So I have watched a couple with Kristen yeah. um, because she is overly exuberant about Bob Barker. <laughs> I love trying to guess what, what year it is or if it's the 70s or the 80s. Okay, they have perms. I'm thinking it's 80s. Oh, oh, oh look at her dress. Look at her shoes. It's got to be the 70s. That prairie collar thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> But more importantly, the people would get called up. Yes. And I mean, they attacked Bob. They did. They would attack him and kiss him and I could, like jump on him. Grab him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Bob had to stay in shape or those people would throw <laughs> his back out. <laughs> it was so it was funny. crazy. Oh, I have so much fun watching it. And when they win a new car. Oh, and they're so old. They're ugly. They are so ugly. I love it. <laughs> so, Kristen, I have my weenies cut on. On the diagonal, Ooh. as instructed by Mary, because clearly this is not just your average microwave corn dog chowder. No, it's this a fancy. fancy yeah, that reminds me of the Connect Four ad in like the seventies or eighties. Yeah, this girl wins. She goes, "I win," and the the little boy goes, "Where?" And she goes, "Here, diagonally." Oh, <laughs> that always got you. It's sneaky Ooh. that diagonal. It, okay, I've cut up the bacon now, and the directions say microwave diced bacon two and a half minutes in a round two and a half quart glass casserole. Well, I'm going to pop this in for two and a half minutes. To the micro. Here we go. And Kristen's going to micro the bacon and I have our diagonally cut hot dogs and now I'm going to start peeling potatoes. Okay, I'm going to cut the onion. So speaking of The Price is Right. Yes. We would stay home sick and watch The Price is Right. And then as we got older, um, we would would put the thermometer up (laughs) to the light bulb so it would heat up. I did that. So we could stay home. I wanted to stay home and watch The Price is Right. Yeah, and not be sick. And so I think mom was starting to catch on. (laughs) And so she would say, I don't want you watching any TV while I'm gone. Okay. Right, Because, you know, if you weren't able to watch TV, what fun was it to stay home? So, guess what I would do? Oh, I know exactly (laughs) what you would do. I would watch TV, and then a little bit before she'd get home, I'd go get a frozen pizza 
out of the freezer and put it on top of the TV because the TV would get warm mm -hmm. and she would come home and put her hand on top of the TV to check to see if we were watching. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. Because I remember coming home and watching uh, soap operas with you. Ooh, yeah. And we weren't allowed to. Right. And so you taught me the pizza trick yes. uh, to fool her. You were good. Boy, Genius. I was sneaky. I yeah. was so sneaky. I mean, where there's a will, there's a way. There is. By gosh, I was going to watch my soap operas. <laughs> there's some things a girl just cannot oh, miss. Oh, yeah. Boy, that bacon is going to town over there. It's got seven seconds left, so I'm going to go check it out. Okay. What's wrong? The bacon is one congealed mass. Oh, great. I think I need to get a wooden spoon to, to break the pieces apart because right now the spatula is not strong enough. Well, I say <laughs> sometimes only a wooden spoon will do. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, Karen, did you love eating corn dogs as a kid? <gasps> did I? I mean, they were hot dogs and good corn sweetness. Bread. So I remember yeah. the first time I ever had a corn dog. You remember that? I do. Where? At what? school. Oh, yeah. It was at elementary school. And do you remember the calendars of the food? Like yes. The, that would tell you what we were having yeah. each week. Yes. yes. And they'd print them up on what colored paper, like the Mary's Memos. Oh, that's right. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you'd bring it home. And then, do you remember that we had a cabinet and the, the monthly menu would be hung on the inside of the cabinet? Mm -hmm. And then we had an old coffee tin and mom taped a piece of paper that said lunch money to the no. outside of the coffee tin. You don't remember this? Not one bit. Oh my gosh. And then in the coffee tin each week, she would, you know, do her budget and put money in the coffee tin. And each day we were responsible for going to the coffee tin and pulling out enough money for that day's lunch. Wow. And I remember lunches costing 35 cents. You are kidding me. I don't remember that one bit. Yes. Problem is I was in elementary school and I couldn't always tell the difference between a quarter and a nickel. <laughs> Oh, and no. so I would get to the school lunch mm -hmm. and I would hand, um, it was not the lunch lady who took the money. It was one of the teachers. It was Mrs. Smith. Mrs. Smith. Yes. Who was the school's tooth puller? Oh, yes. I was scared. If she saw a loose tooth, I'm like, no, no, it's not loose. Mm -hmm. No, no. I was so afraid that she'd she, try to yank it out. She would. She would say, show me which one that is, sweetie. Yes. And you would, and then bam. Yes, she would. Came. She would reach on in. She did. Yes. Not to me. I heard the rumor. I oh, was yeah. having none of that. I kept my mouth shut yes. around Miss Smith. Do you have any loose teeth, Carrie? No. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I wanted to give Mrs. Smith a gift one time. And I remember mom got a gift out of, she had a gift closet, much like I do. Of course. And I can remember what it was. And I was so proud of it. It's so heinous. It was a, a little teeny tiny glass globe filled with water with a fake rose in it. <gasps> oh, the height of beauty. Oh, so gorgeous. I was giving her a fake rose in water. I thought that was the coolest gift ever. Prettiest Whoa, gift at pretty. Wow, Kristen, that's gorgeous. <laughs> what she must have thought when she got that. Oh, I mean, I'm sure she was just thrilled. That's true. Well, okay, so back to giving my not enough money. Oh, yeah. So they'd say, okay, sweetie, I need the rest of the money. What do you What do you mean? Yeah. Well, you gave me a dime and a nickel. That's not a quarter? <laughs> total <laughs> panic. I'm sure they could see, like, yes. this total panic. And then they'd always say, it's okay, honey, just bring me the rest of the money tomorrow. Oh. And I, I would. Wow. But yeah, I remember saying something to my mom, like I, I, I gave the wrong money because I was horrified. And that's when I learned that quarters have ridges oh. and nickels are smooth on the outside edge. Wow. And that's how I learned how to tell yeah, the difference. So now you know today, Carrie. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is a good trauma that makes you remember <laughs> remember things. That's right. That's probably why I don't remember the the money jar at all, oh the money gosh. can, because the money I can. I didn't have trauma over and, it. Yeah, by the time we stopped using the money can, there were dollars in there. Like Ooh. lunch had gone up. Yeah, and it was now like a dollar and a quarter oh, or, or yeah. whatever. Yep. All, all right. right. So oh, the next yeah. directions say to put in the chopped onion, which I have chopped right here. Good job. Um, popping it in the bowl, and then the wieners. So I'm going to take your wieners here Aww. and put them on my cutting board. 
and go pop those in the microwave dish. So it says add wiener slices and onion and cook for four minutes stirring once halfway through. So I'll put them on for two. Okay. And then we'll cross our fingers and stir them up. All right. And I am going to continue the slow, tedious process of potato peeling. Kristen just peeled nine potatoes <laughs> in the time I have peeled half go. of one, which is pretty remarkable as we only needed four potatoes. <laughs> I know, right? I'm just mm -hmm. gifted. Hey, did they sell corn dogs at Cedar Point? Do you remember mm. that? I do not, but you know, I was hyper focused on the funnel cake. Oh yeah. And the fries with vinegar. Oh my gosh. We had we never ate them that way at home. It was no, special. That's good. Oh, so good. You know, if you ask my husband who grew up near Sandusky, mm -hmm. where Cedar Point is, mm -hmm. about Cedar Point, the first words that come out of his mouth are, oh, the French fries. <laughs> It is, if you've never been, I would go as far to say the, if not one of the best amusement parks in the country. Oh my now, gosh, yes. I have absolutely not gone to all of the amusement parks in the country. No. So it's definitely a biased perspective. Yeah. But, oh, the rides are fabulous. It's right oh, there are. on the water. It's amazing. You get kind of get that breeze in the summer, so it wasn't. It was hot, mm -hmm. but it wasn't just awful. Yep. Do you know what ride opened in 1983 in Cedar Point? Wow. Take the a guess. Demon Drop. Yes. Shut up. Really? <laughs> Got it right. <laughs> It was the demon drop. Oh my god! I was too scared to ride that. I was way too chicken. I I finally rode it. Did you? I, I didn't care for it. Oh. I like the corkscrew where you go upside down. I thought I was so cool when I did the corkscrew. Oh my gosh, you go upside down. Oh, you were so brave. Yes. I noticed on this memo, yeah. at the very end of the memo, Mary has a little section to bake your own wedding cake and say, bake your own own wedding cake. Can you imagine doing that today? No. I mean, in all of the wedding preparation that you're doing, right. in the last minute details of making sure that everything's correct, you're going to be in the kitchen baking <laughs> your wedding cake. Oh my goodness. Yep. But apparently this was not necessarily just a, an idea that struck her. There was actually information that had come out through Betty Crocker Kitchens oh. on how to do this. And they had a little like um, recipe flyer oh and you could mail away <laughs> and get this 12 page instructional pamphlet on how to bake your wedding cake, on how to best bake your own wedding cake. Oh my and goodness. Sing. Yeah. And so that got me thinking mm -hmm. in the 1980s, yeah. the number of things that you could mail away and get. Oh, yeah. So I scoured the interwebs mm -hmm. for some interesting things in the 80s that you might get. Oh, fun. And I found really what I thought was the very best of all. And I'm upset that I didn't have it. What? Um, they had Skittles or Starbursts belts <laughs> and they were for free whoa three dollar and 75 cent value they were high quality <laughs> and all you had to do was mail in some UPC codes whoa from your starbursts or skittle either or and they were like those nylon belts. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. And they were all rainbowy with Skittles and Starburst. And you remember those nylon belts would have like that claspy thing? Yes. That would, oh, that was it. And the clasp would have like the logo oh, of Skittles. Cool. So, I mean, they were so beautifully <laughs> 80s. Yeah, I thought that was great. A three seventy five value. Because, wow. I mean, if that wasn't the deal of the century, I, mean, I don't yeah. know what was. All right, I have my potato in, and Carrie's finishing dicing up hers. Okay, so the wiener slices and the onion are done, and then we have to add water, potatoes, and then cover the casserole with a lid and microwave 10 to 12 minutes, turning one half turn and stirring after five minutes. Okay, so so I'm going to go put the water. I think it's only a 
cup of water. Okay, so I've got the rest of the potatoes. All right, I'm gonna pop them in and set the timer for five minutes. So speaking of mail-in things, yes. I have one more thing. Okay, boy, you are on a mm -hmm. roll today. It's, it was not a free rebate. Oh. But did you ever do the records? It was one. Columbia House Publishing. Yes. I did, but I didn't get records. I got tapes. You got tapes. Cassette tapes. I yes. got CDs. Really? Yeah. I thought I'd try to be super cool and get all the super popular, you know, people. So I ordered Purple Rain. I ordered something from Madonna. And then I realized, oh, I only like their songs that are popular on the radio. I don't like the rest of this album. It's not my thing. Yeah. You know? I did the same thing. I was such really? a music nerd yeah. in the fact that I didn't know what I liked. I did not either. As a matter of fact, I realized that I liked Billy Joel because I was riding the bus and they played a song of his and they said, and that was Billy Joel. And it was, I think, from his Innocent Man album. Okay. And then they played another song, like Still Rock and Roll to Me. And I was like, oh, I know that song. I like that song. I think I might like Billy Joel. And that's the moment I began to like Billy Joel because I was like, oh, I'm familiar with this, but our parents didn't play popular music at all. No, not at all. I Yeah, I had no idea. I There was a person I knew who was adamant about their taste in music. Mm -hmm. And so he would mention albums that he loved. And so that's what I bought. Oh, I didn't have any that I loved. I didn't right. have a clue as to what I would like. Okay. okay. Do you so, remember what you got on Columbia House? Or? I don't, but I do remember my first favorite band. Really? Uh-huh. It was DeBarge. And do you know yeah. why? Oh, yeah, you did. And you had their tape. Yes. And you know how tapes used to get stuck in the tape player? Yes. Yes. That would yes. all yes. unravel. That happened to you. Mm -hmm. And you got your teenage angsty. In a fit of teenage rage, you <laughs> threw it in the trash, stupid to bar, to ruined. And um, your sneaky, poor little sister <laughs> snuck into your room and was like, I can fix this. <laughs> and so I took it and I did. I untwisted Ooh. it. I was used my pencil, yeah. in the, the cassette thing until I had a perfect DeBarge tape, which you then immediately said you needed back because it was yours. Of course I, did. <laughs> I was like, I don't think so. Back <laughs> off. And so that was my new. It was the only tape I owned. Oh, yeah. it, I had an album of Disco Duck. Oh. <laughs> and it's a bar. Oh, tape. So <laughs> I remember when our cousins came to visit from New York. Oh, they were so cool. So cool. Mm -hmm. Beth and Lisa. Yep. And they allowed us to keep their single cassette tape of We Are the World. What? And Billy Joel was on it. Oh, my oh. gosh. I loved that. I played it over and over and over. I forgot about Do single remember? cassette tapes. Yes. <gasps> wow. Oh, my gosh. You know what? 1983 had the best music oh i just in that general area but yes 83 yes. in particular 83 in particular i was looking it up because you know this recipe comes from 1983 and i wanted to come up with what's the top song and i started looking and i went down through the top 100 hit singles for 1983 and i knew every one of them and really liked every one of them oh that's Awesome. I know, right? So here's what I did for you, our lovely listening audience. Oh, and so, me too. And Carrie, of course. Okay. So that you guys can join in on the pleasure that I had listening to all of those while I was working on, well, Mom's Wooden Spoon. Mm -hmm. I made you all a Spotify playlist with the top 100 hits from 1983. Oh, I love it. <laughs> yes. And so you guys can get the link to that or the code for that. On our website, momswoodenspoon.com. And it's really cool. You can uh, listen to Spotify on your phone just by going to Spotify and scanning this little code that we'll have up on our website. It'll take you right there. Or if you want to listen on your PC, you can just use the URL for it. How cool. And yeah. you can listen to us on Spotify. Yeah, you know what's funny? I thought I could maybe search for Mom's Wooden Spoon for this playlist because right. it's called Mom's Wooden Spoon is my channel there. Sure. And then I 
called it MWS 1983 playlist, right? Mm -hmm. And I would search for, because I heard you can just search for your friends on Spotify. Yeah. And then if they've made their playlist public, yeah, you can listen to it. No, every time I searched, all I got was our podcast. Oh, but we're like one-stop shop. We are. I love it. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So guys, have fun with that. Oh, Um, how could you not? I'm so excited. It was great. It was great. I'm not going to list them all because there were just too many. Well, I bet there were about a hundred of them. (laughs) You're hilarious. And guess what? Billy Joel had two of them. Oh, no wonder you loved it. (laughs) That's why I didn't stop at like, oh, I don't know, 20 or something like that. I gotta get Billy Joel. Gotta get Billy Joel on there. (laughs) I love it. Yeah. Oh, I wonder if there's other years. Oh, I wonder. Oh, now I'm all excited. I want 1984 and 82. The first five minutes of micro cooking has completed. All right. Why don't you get your camera? Let's take a peek. I'm going to take the lid off and do the big reveal. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, it's hot as heck. I bet. (laughs) I'm going to take the lid off and it just looks looks a lot like potatoes and hot dogs. It does. Okay. (laughs) That does not look like soup. Um, (laughs) Well, we still have a lot to add. Okay. The the creamed corn. I I feel like if we started with stone soup. And the first people who gathered yes. had potatoes and hot dogs, <laughs> that this is, in fact, what your stone soup would look like. Yep. I have stirred it. And then am I supposed to turn it like a little bit? I don't know. I think the turning's crazy, but yes. <laughs> okay. I turned it a little bit. I'm going to put that hot, hot lid back on. And we're going in for our second five minutes. So this should okay. be potentially our last five minutes, unless we decide we want to cook it for 12 minutes. Is that okay. correct? Yep. Okay. And I think in the meantime, we can we get like one of those little food prep bowls and we can just dump all the spices in there. So we'll be all ready. Oh, that's a great idea. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You can be my sous chef. I will. We're going to make mise en place. Oh my gosh, you're so fancy. I am. I don't know what we're doing with mise, but okay. <laughs> and you, it's the plural of mice. <laughs> or moose. Mooses. Moose. <laughs> and you gave me one of these awesome little poppy things that make the triangle in the top or the triangle <laughs> the triangle are you fancy that's <laughs> gonna or maybe you're southern the triangle I don't think so. <laughs> okay so it makes a triangle which i recall as a kid like pineapple juice and you'd yes. pop a little oh, triangle a big can of high c fruit punch yes yes that is actually called a church key Really? That tool is called a church key. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to church key the heck out of the evaporated milk can. Shake well first. Okay. But I think maybe we need something else for the cream corn. Yeah. I have a can Oh, over there she goes. Yeah. Okay. Because I didn't, I'm going to shake. Yeah. Shake, shake it up. Shake, shake, shake it up, baby. Now shake, 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 shake it up, baby. Shake your evaporated milk. Shake, shake your evaporated milk. milk. Okay. okay. Half Sorry teaspoon of salt. We're going to pop that in the mise en place. <laughs> no. Mise en place means everything in its place. Uh-huh. And so that's what you do when you're prepping for a recipe. You have everything pre-chopped. We don't do that on this podcast. No. We actually chop cook while as you we're go. chatting. We're yes. a cook-as-you-go type okay. of podcast. So one triangle with my church key and then the key uh-huh. <laughs> is another triangle on the other side so you can let the air in. That's right. Otherwise, ain't nothing going to happen, right? Otherwise, you'll have limited glugging. Yes. All right. Quarter teaspoon of the black pepper. Oh, you did it. Thank you. It took a lot of muscles. <laughs> and I'm going to measure the rest of the spices, and I'm going to let you open the can. Okay. Of corn. Yep. Okay. So I can't all I did it. was the salt, salt and pepper. pepper. And okay. so here's the sweet basil, basil and oregano. And the oregano. All I'm right. so glad that we're not using sour basil. That I know. Man, that would be horrible. Mm-hmm. Right. Do you know what super famous show ended in 1983? I'll give you a hint. It was the highest rated final episode of the highest rated oh viewing of a show ever, yeah. basically. Mash. Mash. Oh my gosh. I remember our parents watching that. I do too. And hating every minute of it. I did too, but now as an adult, I love it. Okay, and yeah. then, super exciting, growing what? up in small town Northwest Ohio. Oh, yes. Klinger, the actor who plays um, Klinger. Klinger. Jamie Farr. Jamie Farr is mm-hmm. from... Toledo, Ohio. Yes. So Jamie Farr is from Toledo. And what is in Toledo that we love to go to and that my son insists on going to every single time? Oh, yes. 
The it, restaurant is called Tony Paco's. That, thank you. I'm like, there's hot dogs and stuff. Yes, and they have all these famous people have signed the hot dog buns, and they're all over the wall. Yep. And, you know, guess who signed one that I found and took a picture of? Billy Joel? What? Oh, no. Yes. <laughs> Do you get the, the feeling that yeah. Kristen really liked Billy Joel? I love him. <laughs> okay, so I am stirring this up, and I can't tell if the potatoes are breaking down or if that's pieces of mushy bacon, but we are where we are. I think we'll stop at the 10 minutes, so let's see what the further directions are. We're going to add the seasonings, the corn, and the milk. Stir it again. Okay. And, and just a serving temperature. Ooh. Wow, I'm going to get a fork and test these potatoes to make sure they're tender. All right. Um, um, and we don't want to boil it. Oh. So three to five minutes is what's suggested now. And do not boil. Does it specifically it, say do not boil? In all cap. Okay, well, it's probably because she doesn't want it to. Oh, shit. <laughs> so Kristen pulled a potato out to check how it worked, put it on the cutting, cutting board, board, and then promptly squished the potato onto the floor. A, the potatoes are slimy from the bacon grease, and B, I don't think they're tender enough yet. I, I'm assuming if when you go to cut it with your fork, it goes flying no. onto the floor, that in fact is not right. cooked enough. Listen to this. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Listen to minutes. nothing Listen to as nothing. she can't cut through the potato. All right, two more minutes it is. All right. <laughs> Wow. So all the in and out in this micro is, to me, not time saving. No, I mean, you think about it's 10 to 12 minutes in the microwave. We could have just been cooking this on the stovetop for the equal amount of time. Right. And we wouldn't have had to have gone back and forth and add this and then add this and right. then add this. And opening and closing, it would have just been there. Yeah. Just boil it away on the... Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know that this is an improvement. Although, I don't know. How long do you boil potatoes until they get soft? Is 10 minutes enough? Probably. Well, it depends on how small you cut the pieces. But it takes so much time to get the water up to boil True. on the stove. True. Right? But you could be doing other things, prepping for this. You could be doing your mise en place while you're waiting for the right. water to boil. Right? You just wanted to sound all fancy and I French, know. didn't you? Yeah, I say that again. Wee oui, wee. Oui. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're going to wait for that to keep on cooking. Yep. I did think of one of the CDs I bought. You did? I did. Creedence Clearwater Revival. What? So it turns out that that was an excellent suggestion. Oh, yes. Um, I do love CCR. CCR is great. Oh, so good. It was it was a good uh, steal of a favorite band from somebody else when you don't know what you're doing. Yeah. Um, that one worked. There are others that obviously I can't recall because I didn't like them. Right. And so, but I got a lot of duds, but you know, so it goes. And then my mom always told us to be very careful because, you know, it's all a trick. The Columbia House thing. Oh, yeah. You well, get in yeah. and then they start sending you stuff and then you have to pay for it. If you don't cancel soon enough on a, the right. record album of the month. Then exactly. Yeah. So in an act of fear, I went in, I picked my, you know, 12 for a penny, my required three others and immediately canceled. Right. And then, of course, you know, a month later, two of my favorite bands came out. Yeah. And I was... No Stuff. longer in Yeah. Yeah, that's what I did. I bought as many as I possibly could of the famous bands yes. that I thought would be make me cool. Yeah, that me too. <laughs> ah, we were such nerds. Such nerds. It was awful. Yep. All right. Well, this looks more like soup now that you've added in those ingredients. It, it looks, smells yummy. It smells like a chowder. It really does. It looks like a chowder. Yeah. Okay, okay. so I'm going to put the lid on and okay. then we'll microwave it. Or maybe we should not microwave it with the lid on so we can keep an eye on it because it says do not boil. Uh, yeah, I, I'm going to leave that up. Okay, okay. how much milk do you want potentially splattering in your microwave? Well, and you know, I thought we had a big enough container, but now that we've added everything, it's almost up to the edge. There's, yes, it's it's pretty full. This is a lot of chowder we've got going here. It is. I hope you like it. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm going to click two minutes and we'll see okay. how hot that brings it up. I sure hope the potatoes are done. Yes, that they're not crunchy. Yeah, okay, so... so Add seasonings, corn, evaporated milk, okay. stirring well, microwave just to serving temperature. Oh, it suggests three to five minutes. But okay. No boil. No boil. Yes. Okay. So I find that one of the best parts of the corn dog is the fact that you can eat it on a stick. I mean, it's just the best. Oh, yeah. So the question is why? Why does the stick make it? So fantastic. Food on a stick is fun. It's always better. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't understand what the point is. So right. I thought, okay, let me look. Yeah. Let's see. So apparently there's a thing called retronasal 
Ooh, like us, Ol- retro. Olfaction. Retro nasal olfaction. Oh, nice. And apparently it is when you smell your food, mm-hmm. it tastes better. Oh, yeah. And so somebody has actually done studies where they make you plug your nose right. and eat it and then you unplug it and it tastes better. So the idea is, is when it's on a stick and you shove it up to your face, you get more of the food closer to your nose. Oh, my gosh. And so you smell it better as you eat it. Right. And so it does actually taste better when it's on a stick. Crazy. I know. <laughs> Who would have thought? Oh my goodness. Well, I'm going to go over to the microwave oven. We're going to stir this. We're going to dish it up and we will see you guys in just a few minutes. We have a nice steamy bowl of corn dog chowder sitting yum, here in yum. front of us, fresh out of the micro. <laughs> Hot dog soup is I'm going to start calling it. <laughs> I think you should. <laughs> and so I think because you developed the fabulous name, you go first. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, you know what? I like hot dogs. I like corn. I like corn dogs. So let's try this. My only concern is the bacon, but it looks to me like it has kind of broken up a little bit. Mm -hmm. So let me get a little bit of potato, a little bit of bacon, and a little bit of hot dog. Well, of course, because that's the perfect Mm -hmm. bite. Okay, I'm going to take the bite. The potatoes are still not cooked enough. No! (laughs) All right. So apparently I cut the potatoes too big. Yep. If you're going to make this, cut them smaller. They don't cook in 10 minutes time. No. All right. So you give us your impressions and I will go in for my bite. Well, you know what? The flavor's good. I'm just not used to having a hot dog in my soup, in my (laughs) chowder, you know, but the chowdery part of it is yummy. And I think that a kid would really like this. It would be a very family-friendly kind of food. Yes, and I certainly will not avoid eating the leftovers. We're going to eat it, and I think we're going to enjoy it. All right, well, that is it for this episode. Thank you all so much for joining us. Please check out our website for lots of goodies, and don't forget to add some feedback if you liked what you heard, but don't write anything corny. Get it? Corn dog chowder, corny. (laughs) Okay, bye. Thanks for listening to Mom's Wooden Spoon. If you like what you heard, don't forget to subscribe. If you want a copy of this recipe or to check out our blog, click on the link to our website in the podcast description. If you'd rather, you could get to our website through Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Pick your poison. Don't say poison. We're making food.